If you're taking this class, you surely know what market segmentation means and how important it is in marketing. The entire premise of marketing is that people have different needs and desire different benefits, so we should try and identify groups of consumers who can be targeted with different types of products. At the same time, identifying segments is not an easy task, and it is both a science and an art. The science part uses analytic methods to create the segments, and the art lies in figuring out how many segments there should be and how they differ from one another. The managerial question we are trying to answer is, how should I segment the market such that customers in one segment are similar enough to each other, yet different enough from other segments to be treated differently? The research technique we will use is called cluster analysis, which is used to classify objects into clusters or groups or segments. These terms are used interchangeably. This technique can be used with any type of object. For example, you can group customers or cities or MBA programs into clusters. Broadly speaking, there are two approaches to clustering. The first is called k-means clustering. Here you decide beforehand how many clusters or segments you want and figure out the best way to allocate people to those clusters. This is useful when there is some practical reason to have a fixed number of clusters. For example, you might have four salespeople and so you want to create four clusters of clients, one for each salesperson. This method is also useful when you have a large number of data points to allocate into clusters. The second approach is called hierarchical clustering and with this approach we try different cluster sizes and find the best or optimal cluster solution that meets our criteria and is managerially useful. This is usually possible only with a small number of data points. Let's first look at k-means clustering. Let's take an example of a survey in which you have data on two variables, age and money spent, for a sample of 15 customers. A plot of the data might look like this. k-means clustering proceeds in a stepwise manner. In step one, choose the number of clusters you want. This could be based on your knowledge of the data or what is useful from a managerial perspective. Let's say k equals 2. In step 2, pick the center point or seed of each cluster called the centroid. The starting seeds could be any random points. In the next few steps, they will move to more appropriate locations. The cluster 1 seed is shown as a green dot and the cluster 2 seed as an orange dot. In step 3, assign each data point to the cluster centroid that it is closest to. For example, the data point on the bottom left side is closer to cluster 1 centroid, so it is assigned to that cluster. This data point on the right is closer to cluster 2's centroid, and so is assigned to that cluster. When all the data points are assigned, we go to step 4, in which we adjust the centroids. A new centroid for each cluster is calculated based on the points assigned to that cluster. The centroids are moved to their new location. Now we simply repeat steps 3 and 4. Points are assigned to the clusters to which they are closest and the centroids are adjusted to their new locations. This process continues until no more changes are needed. That is, every point is closest to the center of its cluster. In this example, we have all the green points on the left in one cluster. This group spends more money and is of lower age, so we might call them the Young Spenders cluster. All the yellow points on the right are in the other cluster. This group is older and spends less money, so we can call them the Old Frugals cluster. A key decision to be made here is the number of clusters you want. How do you decide how many you should have? There are two options. One, the decision can be made based on what is useful from the management's standpoint. As I mentioned earlier, if you need to assign customers to four salespeople, then that's a good reason to choose four clusters. Or two, you can run the analysis repeatedly, adding one cluster at a time, and see how much benefit there is from adding those clusters. So the question now is, how do you define benefit? One way to measure benefit is the reduction in the total variation within the clusters. Since we would like to end up with segments whose members are similar within and different from other segments, we want the lowest possible total within cluster variation. 
Naturally, adding more clusters will always lower this variation since the clusters will be more homogeneous. In the extreme, if every individual is in their own cluster, the total within cluster variation will be zero. But obviously, the reduction will get smaller and smaller as k, the number of clusters, increases. For example, look at the plots with two clusters and with three clusters. With two clusters, the points in the left cluster are further from the centroid, so the total variation is higher than with three clusters. This shows that the total within cluster variation will always be lower with more clusters. The question is, is it lowered enough to justify the greater complexity of having one more cluster? Here's a rule of thumb we use to decide how many clusters we should have. It's called the elbow method. The name is not elegant, but it's an accurate description. We plot a graph with the total within cluster variation on the y-axis and the number of clusters on the x-axis. As we can see, the variation decreases steeply until you get to three clusters, after which it still decreases, but less sharply. This is known as the elbow of the plot, and the elbow shows the optimal number of clusters based on the within cluster variation. In other words, after the elbow, further clustering does not yield as much benefit as before. Of course, this is not the end of the story. You still have to make sure that the number of clusters you end up with is managerially useful. That is, you can formulate a strategy that makes use of this clustering solution. For example, if you end up with three clusters that differ in terms of their needs, and you only have two products that you can use to target those segments, then it may not make sense to have three clusters.